Hi guys, what's up? Welcome back to another episode. If you are new to this channel, my name is Savvy. I'm the creator of the Microvore Diet and Fruit Fit Forge. These are both vegan health and weight loss programs. Today I wanted to talk about some common reasons why some people have trouble losing weight on a plant-based diet. Lots of people experience weight loss when cutting out meat, dairy, and eggs, but not everyone is able to keep losing weight over time and can even gain weight following some styles of vegan eating. So today I wanted to guide you guys through some questions that you can ask yourself to see if anything you're doing right now is causing you to gain weight and to see if there's anything that you can start doing to boost weight loss and improve health on a vegan diet. Question number one is, are you eating a lot of refined sugars or oils? These are high calorie food ingredients that don't satisfy hunger, they can throw your hormones out of whack, cause weight gain, and prevent fat loss. So when you frequently eat refined carbohydrates like sugar and white grain flours and starch flours, this brings on an insulin response that sabotages weight loss. Insulin is a storage hormone. It causes fats in the blood to be stored in fat cells, and it prevents muscle cells from burning fat for energy. You guys definitely don't have to cut out carbs completely or go on a low carb diet. Carbs from whole plant sources like fruit, grains, and starches fuel our nervous system and keep our mood in balance but refined carbohydrates are not doing you any favors. So consider minimizing the amount of sugar, fruit juices, vegan desserts, and processed foods like bread, crackers, cookies, pasta that you may be eating. A good rule of thumb is aiming for mostly whole foods that you can find local and organic if possible. This also goes for plant oils, and just like sugar, they've been stripped of many essential nutrients to produce a high caloric food that doesn't make you feel full, can cause inflammation and hormonal imbalance, leading to weight gain. I'm not trying to demonize plant oils because, you know, some oils like coconut and olive oil can be used in moderation without too much concern, but if weight loss is a primary goal, then I strongly suggest you guys just skip the sugars and oils. Question number two is, are you meeting your micronutrient needs? One of my weight loss ebooks and the name of this channel is the Microvore Diet because it's all about getting enough of the vitamins and minerals that are often overlooked in most diets, including vegan ones. Micronutrients are needed in all body processes, especially those important for weight loss. For example, without enough iodine, your thyroid gland can't regulate your metabolism. Your red blood cells need iron to transport oxygen, which is needed to burn fat for energy. B vitamins like thiamine, riboflavin, folic acid, B12, and others are critical for transforming fat into energy and preventing fatigue. Micros matter, and deficiency in any vitamin or mineral can be the greatest limiting factor in your weight loss. The best way of ensuring you are getting the micros you need is by choosing nutrient-rich foods, foods that have a lot of vitamins and minerals. In our free starter guide on our website, we have a list called the top 24 healthiest plant foods that features foods you likely already know are very healthy, like kale, spinach, and legumes, but also very common foods that are secretly extremely healthy. When you start eating more of these foods, you're going to notice your body come alive and have tons of more energy. Question number three is, are your meals balanced in macros? Macronutrients are the calorie containing nutrients in food, including carbs, fat, and protein. I strongly believe that a balance between macronutrients is the best strategy for weight loss, because when you start avoiding any particular macronutrient, it often just leads to cravings, binging, and health issues down the road. Say you start practicing a low-carb diet, you might feel pretty good for a while, and then start to have sugar cravings and binge out on those refined carbs that are really bad for you. If you follow a low-fat, high-carb diet, you might find you have a lot of energy at first, but maybe aren't as satisfied after meals and have to eat more frequently. And then after a few months, many people notice their skin starting to dry up. 
and they're putting on weight even if they're eating a whole foods plant-based diet. Also, thinking back to micronutrients, fat-soluble vitamins like A, E, and K need dietary fat to be absorbed. It's really not a good idea to deny yourself any macronutrient because just like vitamins and minerals, they're all important for health. Having a balance between macros and meals makes them both energizing and satiating, they won't spike your blood sugar, and when you start eating meals that satisfy you for hours, you don't feel like snacking and you don't have cravings. So in our guidebook, we have a formula that shows you what foods have what macronutrients and how you can combine them to achieve macro balance in meals. I'm planning on doing a video soon showing a meal demonstration of the formula, but as of now, I just, um, I included a photo of the formula in the blog post of this video, which is linked below. Question number four, am I moving enough? So of course nutrition plays a huge role in weight loss, but how we lose weight is by burning it for energy, right? And the biggest consumers of energy in our body are muscle cells. When we engage in physical activity and when our diet is set up properly, those muscle cells will be burning fat for energy, which is what you want. You don't want to be burning your glucose, glycogen, or protein stores for energy. The kind of weight loss we want is fat loss. So if you're following the tips that we've gone through so far, any form of exercise is going to be more effective for fat loss. Depending on your current body weight and health, some forms of activity are going to be more appropriate for you. Walking is a low intensity activity that most people can do every single day and it's really great for weight loss, so try to walk as much as possible. Now, if you can incorporate some form of resistance training like weightlifting, this is really good because it'll increase the amount of muscle you guys have and as we know, muscle cells are really big consumers of energy. So lifting weights can be really helpful. So can high intensity aerobic activities like sprints on a bike or when running. But if you're not able to do that, it's completely fine to just stick to light activities like walking, biking, and lifting light weights. Just start where you're at because if you are consistent, you're going to become fitter and be able to do more down the road. So those are just some of the most important questions you can ask yourself if you're having trouble losing weight on a plant-based diet. There are definitely other factors that can interfere with weight loss, like medical conditions, hormonal imbalances. So if you guys are practicing the tips we talked about and are still struggling and feeling really tired all the time, putting on weight, please let your doctor know because there could be an underlying health issue and it's just always a good idea to get a blood test to see if anything's up. For most people though, simple changes can make a huge difference in how you feel on a vegan diet and make it a lot easier to lose weight. If you are on the hunt for recipes and advice on vegan health and weight loss, you can hop on over to our website, sign up for a free starter guide, and check out our guidebooks and recipe books. Thanks so much for tuning in today, guys. I hope you have a great day ahead, and I'll see you soon. Bye.